Oh God, resume. Right. So finding your comfortable position. If you're lying down on the mat, keeping the legs bent, or straight, whichever works best for you. If you're sitting on the chair, see so if you can allow yourself to lift up a little bit taller, a little bit higher, encouraging a little bit more space at the front of the abdomen. So making sure that I'm not compressing the abdomen and then preventing the diaphragm, your big breathing muscle inside of the rib cage from moving, from allowing that breath. So trying to create space at the front to find in a comfortable position. If you're lying down on the back, encouraging the arms to turn, palm of the hands facing up and towards the ceiling, feeling the front of the shoulder opening up, the chest opening up a little bit more. And then maintaining that position, just noticing how the body feels. Do I feel a bit twisted? Do I feel leaning? Um, do I feel straight? Do I feel more pressure on my right, on my left to seat burn, behind my right, behind my left to shoulder? I'm not changing anything, I'm just noticing where the body is and how it feels. And then start focusing on the breath. So notice where the breath is at the moment. If I can feel it at the top of the chest, so I feel that kind of like tight <clears throat> and chest that. Um, I raise the chest every time that I breathe. See if I can try and calm the breath and calm the body down. Encouraging the front of the chest and the front of the throat to stay soft, allowing the belly to expand with the breath. So I'm going to inhale, trying to let the belly expand with the inhalation. And then exhale, I'm just going to let it relax. I'm not actively pushing the belly out. I'm just allowing the breath to do that. So I'm going to take a couple of breaths here. See if I can notice the difference. See if I can feel less tension along the front of the throat, across the chest and into the collarbones. And then as I feel a little bit more settled, I feel the breath that feels a little bit more relaxed. I'm just going to start working on the shoulder, on the arm. I'm going to start raising the right or left arm up to the front. And then I'm going to reach it as high, as far, as it feels comfortable for the shoulder. Then I'm going to ease the arm back and then with the left, I'm going to do the same. So it could be a very small movement. It could be a very big movement. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Just to see if you can try and find the most relaxed one. So nothing is pinching, nothing seems to be catching or grinding on the shoulder. Picturing the arm dropping into the Dropping into the shoulder socket, allowing movement into the shoulder, but making sure that that movement is not causing discomfort, is not causing pain. Comparing right and left aside, I might feel that my right arm moves better than the left. The left just seems to be fatiguing. If I'm seating up, the load will be on the shoulder. So noticing how high I can take the right arm, Noticing how far the left arm can go. Noticing if you tend to lean when you're lifting the arm. If I lean, that tendency is to use the neck. So see if I can try and stop before I lean, even if the lift feels very small. Three. Two. Last one. And... Releasing back, releasing the shoulders. There's a little bit more movement into the shoulder joint. I'm going to change the direction of that movement. This time, instead of going into a front raise, I'm going to go into a little side opening. So if you're lying down, you're probably better off to reach the arms straight ahead. If I'm sitting up, it doesn't matter. I can lift the arm when I'm ready to move it. I'm going to start opening the right arm out to the right, as far to the right as I can feel a nice and gentle opening across the front of the chest, or if I'm lying down as far to the side as I'm touching the floor. Then I'm going to come back to the center, and then I'm going to open that left arm to the left. So see if you can create a nice and gentle opening across the front of the chest. If I'm sitting up, it doesn't matter if the arm is just shoulder height or a little bit lower, as far as when I open, I can feel that nice space at the front of the chest, the front of the body. And then I'm going to open up the other way. 
If I'm lying down, I'm a little bit restricted because the floor is underneath, so I can't let the arm open up past the, a certain point. But still see if you can think of reaching the arm out of the shoulder socket. It says that somebody was trying to pull the arm out to the side as I'm lowering it down and towards the ground. Four. Three. Two. One, arms releasing back, releasing the shoulders, relaxing the arms, just a little bit more movement into the shoulder joint. I'm going to change the direction one last time. This time I'm going to swing the arm round the side. So if you're sitting up, imagine to have your back against the wall. I'm going to keep the right arm on the wall and then I'm going to start scooping it round and then bringing it towards the head into a nice big swing. And then I'm going to return my way back in reverse. Then with the left, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to swing it round and then come back. So nice open into the right and back. And then a nice open into that left and back. As if I was trying to wave the arm. If you're lying down, <laughs> same as before, you've got the floor to guide you. So as the arm opens to the side, I'm going to try and keep it as close to the floor as possible. Unless I find that with my arm close to the floor, the shoulder feels a sore. So it's pinching, it's catching, it feels tender. I'm just going to allow the arm to come up a little bit higher, but still encouraging that lateral swing and then coming back. And then same as I've been doing so far, Noticing difference between the right and the left side. My right arm moves better than the left. The left feels a bit stiffer or it clicks slightly. As far as there is no pain with the clicking, I'm going to keep it going. If there is pain, if there is discomfort, I'm going to try and play with the position of the arm until I find a better movement that is not creating pain in the joint. Four. Three, two, last one, and releasing back, releasing the shoulders. Shoulders should be feeling a little bit warmer. I'm going to try and see if I can focus a little bit more this time into the neck and the upper back, so the cervical and thoracic spine. So allowing the arms to relax, I'm just going to start turning the head from one side over to the other, from one side over to the other. And then same as usual, as you're turning, as you're trying to create that turn through the cervical spine, notice the direction and the position of the head, especially if you're sitting up, as the head is not touching anything, it's not touching the ground. You might find that as you turn to one side, the chin is sticking out slightly or the chin is stacking in slightly. See if I can try and find the same movement both right and left side. And then noticing any restriction. So I feel that as I turn to the left, I can turn further. As I turn to the right, it feels a bit stiffer. Look at the shoulder as you, as you turn to the side. Noticing if you're taking the shoulder with you, see if you can keep the shoulder steady. So it's just the head that is moving on top of the shoulder. So turning one and then turning the other way. As you start feeling the movement that feels a little bit easier, a little bit looser, then I'm going to try and see if I can encourage a little bit more stretch through the neck. So I want to turn towards the stiffer side, if there is one, otherwise just pick one side. So I'm going to turn to look over that shoulder, I'm going to keep the head that way. And then as I keep the head looking that way, with the arm I'm turning away from, I'm going to reach to the side. Is it somebody to grab hold of the arm and then was trying to 
pull me off to the side. So I'm going to reach the arm as far as I can, turning the head in the opposite direction until I can feel a gentle traction that goes from the shoulder across the front of the chest all the way around to the side of the neck and towards the jaw. Five, four, three, two, one. And then I'm going to release back, turning the head back to the middle, resetting the shoulders if you need to, and then looking the other way. I'm going to hold the head to the other side and then with the arm I'm looking away, from, I'm going to reach off as if somebody really grab hold of that arm. I was pulling it off to the side. So see if I can try and find that traction again that from the shoulder comes across the chest, the wraps around the side of the neck towards the jaw. Five, four, three, two, one, and release and back, returning the head back to the middle, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. I'm going to change the direction of the movement. This time I'm going to go into a little flexion extension. So going into a little skull rock. If I'm seated, I'm going to tuck the chin and then I'm going to try and curl the head or the chin towards the throat. So I'm going to try and round the back of the neck as much as I can. And then lifting the chin up and towards the ceiling, I'm going to try and lengthen and stretch it through the front of the throat. And then I'm going to tuck in again. If I'm lying down, I want the head to stay on the floor. I'm going to press the chin down towards the back of the throat. So really trying to lengthen the back of the neck. And then I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to look up and look behind and see if I can open up the front of the throat. And then I'm going to tuck it in again. As you're changing from flexion into extension, again, noticing difference. It, sometimes you might find that, that one side of the neck seems to be tighter than the other. So the head is almost like it coming down at an angle slightly because one side is pulling stronger. See if I can keep that center line. See if I can keep that pull through the middle. And then same thing at the front of the throat. As I look up, I might find that one side of the throat actually pulls more than the other side. Making sure that the chin is still centered to see if I can try and create a nice even lift to both right and left to side. And then same as usual, if you want to make the stretch just a little bit stronger, then see if you can. As you look up, as you look behind, push the tongue into the roof of the mouth. So I'm going to lock the tongue, tongue into the roof of the mouth. I should be able to feel just a little bit more stretch just underneath the chin and down the front of the throat. Then I'm going to ease back and then stretch in the back of the neck. And lifting again. As I feel again, the movement feels a little bit easier. It feels a bit freer. Then I'm going to try and see if I can add the rib cage, add the thoracic spine, add the chest. So as I look up, I'm going to try and stick the front of the chest forward. So I'm going to look up, I'm going to push the chest forward, see if I can encourage extension, not just into the back of the neck, but also into the upper back. And then as I tuck the chin in, I'm going to push the rib cage back to see if I can try and create a stretch, a movement into the upper back too. And then I'm going to extend up again. If you're lying down again, you're limited for space because the mat or the floor is behind you. So to encourage a little bit more movement, what I want is to try and Look back and then trying to push the chest up and towards the ceiling. So trying to lift the back of the ribcage off the ground. As I flex at this time, I'm going to tuck the chin in and then supporting the head with one or with both hands, I'm going to curl my way up until I can feel a nice gentle stretch going from the back of the neck all the way to the middle of the back. And then I'm going to release. I'm going to extend. And then I'm going to come forward and flex. 
And then as you keep that movement going, just that notice, making sure that as you're going into extension, so as you're looking up, as you're looking behind, there is no pain coming down the arms. So there is no tingling into the fingers. There is not referred shooting pain down the arms. So I'm not pinching, I'm not compressing any nerve at the back of the neck. As I come forward, I'm going to stretch the back of the neck and the middle of the back. As I lift up, I'm going to try and open up and lift it through the chest and then lengthen through the front of the throat. Last time, rounding and flexing as much as you can. And then opening up and releasing back, releasing the shoulders, releasing the upper back. It's a little bit more movement at the top. I'm going to change the movement one more time. From flexion extension, I'm going to go into a little rotation, into a little um, twist. So if you're sitting up, you've got quite a lot of space. So I'm just going to try and use the, all of the space. I'm going to raise my left arm up to the front. And then with that left hand, I'm going to try and touch the right side of the room. So I'm going to bring the arm across and then I'm going to rotate, 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 rotate as far as I can. So imagine to be turning to, I don't know, put your seat belt on. So I'm going to reach across and try to grab my seat belt to pull it across the front. Then with the right arm, I'm going to reach across to the left and then I'm going to do the same thing for going the other way. If you're lying down, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to reach across with one arm and then I'm going to turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and turn as far as I can. The only thing is I want to keep the opposite bum cheek on the ground. So making sure that I'm not turning the all of the body, I'm just turning the shoulders, turning the rib cage. Then I'm going to ease back and then reaching across with the other arm. I'm going to reach and reach and reach and reach as far as I can. Easing back and then to the other side. Taking the head with you, so lifting the head off the ground if it feels comfortable, keeping the head on the floor if I feel that the neck doesn't feel great, so I'm just going to keep the weight of the head on the floor. Otherwise, taking the head with you, so you can reach just a little bit further, coming back and then reaching across the other way, see if I can go a little bit more to the other side. So see if I can be aware of a nice and gentle stretch behind the shoulder and into the middle of the back and a nice rotation into the back. So each time, see if I can try and turn to look a little bit further around and then come back. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And releasing back, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. Hopefully a little bit more movement through the thoracic, through the upper body too. I'm going to focus on the hips, or focus on the legs. I'm going to try and mobilize into the hip joint. I'm going to start off with a little opening and closing. So I'm going to Shuffle feet and knees nice and close together. It doesn't matter if I'm seated or lying down. And then from there, I'm going to start opening the right knee out to the right. I'm going to try and get the leg as, as far out as possible, but making sure that the movement is in the right hip, but not on the left bum cheek. So I'm not turning my bum, I'm just opening the leg. Then I'm going to close the leg all the way back to the center. And then I'm going to open that left leg out to that left. So feeling movement into that hip joint, easing that leg back to the middle and then opening to the other side. So it doesn't need to be a massive movement. What I want is to just try to warm up the hip. So try to get it to move, trying to get it to glide. If I feel that the leg is very stiff, so I don't seem to be able to move the leg, I'm going to use my hand to help me. So I'm just going to push out to encourage that opening. And I might push in to encourage that closing again. I'm going to push up, push out to encourage the opening the other way, and then pull back in, trying to encourage the closing. So see if I can 
create just a little bit more movement into the hip, but making sure that nothing is creating pinching, nothing is creating pain. So I'm not forcing, I'm not fighting it. So pushing it out, squeezing it back, opening and closing back. And then same as you've been doing for the arms and for the shoulders, notice if there is any difference between the right and the left side. So I might find that my right hip feels really loose. My pelvis is staying steady on the ground. I'm not twisting to the side. My left feels a little bit stiffer or vice versa. Always focus on the stiffer side. So see if I can try and encourage a better movement that way. See if I can ease off, or see if I can try and release some of the tension, some of the stiffness from that leg, from that hip. Four. Three. Two. Last one, and releasing back. Relaxing the hips and releasing the legs. It's a little bit more movement, so I can feel the joints moving. I'm going to change the direction of the movement. This time I'm going to go for a little loaded lift. So I'm going to go for a little knee lift. So if you know that you don't have a very good control over the leg, I'm going to use a band, a strap, or anything behind the right leg so that I can control it with the arms. If I know that I can control the leg easily, then I'm just going to lift that right foot off the ground and then pop it back down again. Lift that right foot off the ground and then pop it back down again. So this time, instead of moving in and out, I'm going to move it up and down. If I'm sitting on the chair, exactly the same. I could use the band to give me a little help so that I can pull up on the leg. I can use the arms if I want to. See if I can encourage a little movement, moving up and then dropping down. It doesn't matter if the foot doesn't physically lift off the ground. But what I want is to encourage some movement, but this time going that way. So moving up and down, and forward and back. So it could be very little, it could be quite big. Again, it depends on the mobility through the hip. It depends on how stiff the hip is. It depends on how heavy that leg feels. Five. Four, three, two, last one, and releasing back, releasing the hip, relaxing the leg. I'm going to repeat exactly the same thing with the left side. So if you need a little support behind that leg, Sliding the band behind that leg or holding with the hands if you're seated, as it's reasonably easy to reach around. And then I'm going to see how much movement can I create on this side. The same as you did on the right side. See if you can be aware of the movement happening in the hip joint, not in the back. So the back is not swinging forward and back. The back is holding steady, the belly is connected. The center is supporting me while the leg, the hip joint is articulating up and then down. And then same as on the other side, it could be a big lift, it could be a small lift. As far as I can feel a little movement happening in the hip, that's all I want. I'm just trying to release some of the stiffness, see if I can encourage the joint to move a little bit more each time. Five, four, three, 
Tjuh. Last one. And releasing back, relaxing the hip, releasing the legs a little bit more. Activation at the front. What I want is to keep the same direction, but work the opposite way. So this time, what I want is to try and find a little bit more connection at the back. So I want to get the back of the bomb going, the glutes going. So I'm going to set the feet a comfortable distance, um, whether I'm lying on the back or sitting up. And then instead of trying to lift that foot off the ground, I'm going to try and push the foot into the ground. So I'm going to press down on the right foot as hard as I can and then release. And then I'm going to press down on the left foot as hard as I can and release. If you're seated, it should be feeling as if you were trying to stand up. So I'm going to push down on the right leg as if I was trying to stand up on my right leg and then release. And then push down with the left as if I was trying to Stand up on the left leg and release. So see if I can find that connection to the back of the bum. So as I push on the right leg, I should be able to feel the right bum cheek bracing and squeezing. As I press down on that left leg, I should be able to feel the tension coming up into that left bum cheek. If I'm lying down, I'm going to imagine to be bridging, but on one leg. As I push down on the right leg, I'm going to try and think of the right bum cheek, trying to lift my hips off the ground, lift the back, lift the rib cage off the ground if possible. And then I'm just going to ease my way down. Then I'm going to focus on that left bum cheek. I'm going to push down through that left foot, squeezing with the left side of the bum. I'm going to try and lift the side as I feel comfortable, as I feel in control. And then I'm going to drop my way back. So same as I've been doing so far. It doesn't matter if the movement is small or big, but see if I can try and find that connection. See if I can focus on the bum. If I find that I can't feel anything, I don't feel more bum tensing. See if I can actively clench it. So can I try and squeeze the bum cheek? And I try and clench the bum cheek as I push down on the leg. And I try and clench the other side as I push down on the leg. And then easing back. Four. Three. Two. And then last one. And releasing back, releasing the hips, or releasing the legs just a little bit more connection through the hip. I'm going to change the direction one more time. This time, see if I can try and focus a little bit more on the inside of the legs. So if you've got a pillow or one of the uh, Pilates ball, I'm going to put it between the knees or between the legs. If I don't have a pillow, if I don't have a ball, I can press the knees and just making sure that the bony bit of the knee on the inside is not digging so it doesn't feel painful. If I don't have anything, I can use my hands. So I'm just going to clench the fist to pop the hands between the inner thighs and then just give you a little space between the knees. <laughs> and then from there, I'm going to walk the feet a little bit closer together. And then I'm going to start to squeeze in the ball. So I'm going to try and squeeze the knees together until I can feel the inner thighs really trying to pull. Then I'm going to ease that tension and then I'm going to squeeze it again. As you're creating the squeeze, see if you can be aware of the tension coming up through the inner thighs and then lifting all the way up through your pelvic floor. So men and women, no difference. Imagine to be lifting everything up towards the inside of the body. So I'm going to squeeze and lift everything in, everything up, and then I'm going to release. Then again, squeeze and trying to lift everything in, everything up, and release. And then as you keep that pressure, as you keep that squeeze going, see if you can notice that the inner thighs, Am I using my right as much as my left? Or does it feel as if one is working harder than the other? If I can feel that one is compensating, so one is working harder than the other, always focus on the other side. 
So see if I can get a little bit more recruitment, a little bit more awareness of that leg. See if I can make it work a little bit harder to squeeze in. If I feel that I don't have any strength whatsoever pressing through the ball, I'm going to use my hands to help. So I'm just going to guide that legs into that little squeeze. And then I'm going to release. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last time. And releasing back, pushing the ball to one side, releasing the hips, releasing the inner thighs. It's a little bit more connection to the inside of the leg too. I'm going to try and see if I can bring the effort up into the lower back. So I'm going to try and get into a little pelvic tilt. So if I'm sitting up on the east arm, imagine to be rolling from your seat bones for the very tip, for the very front of your seat bones, back onto your tailbone, then lifting back onto the seat bones and then onto the tailbone again. So see if I can think of the back of the pelvis so gently rocking forward and back. So see if I can try and create a little bit more movement down into the lumbar spine. If I'm lying down, I've got the floor to guide me. I'm going to Tilt the pelvis back, I'm going for a little posterior tilt to press in the lower back into the ground. And then I'm going to tilt forward and then lift the lower back away. Then again, I'm going to tilt back, press it into the ground and then forward and then arching it away. So creating that gentle rocking forward and back with the hips. Think of a nice and gentle tension at the front of the belly to create that tilt and then releasing the tension, encouraging that extension. So tilting and releasing the tilt. So this time trying to get the focus around the um, corset, around that midsection, around that belt. Think of the belly button drawing in, drawing down. The belly tensing gently to create that tilt and then releasing back. Five. Oh. Three. Two. Last one. And releasing back, releasing the hips, or releasing the back. If you're lying down, Hugging the knees to the chest, giving the hips a gentle rocking, releasing through the hips, releasing into the lower back. So there's a little bit more movement down into that lumbar. I'm going to try and see if I can stretch off the legs. So shuffling the feet and the knees are nice and close together. I'm going to let the knees open out to the side of the soles of the feet come together if I'm lying down on the mat. And then I'm just going to let gravity take over. So I'm just going to let the weight of the leg pull them down and towards the ground to see if I can encourage that opening through the inner thighs. If I'm sitting up, gravity is not going to help me. So I might need to use my hands. So I'm just going to push the knees out and away and then I'm going to keep pressing out as far as the legs will go, as far as I can feel a gentle release through the inner thighs. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Bring the legs all the way back in. If you're lying down, I'm going to extend my left leg away along the floor. 
lifting the right leg and then with that left hand I'm going to hook around the knee and then I'm going to pull the leg across until I can feel the stretch coming down the side of the hip and the side of the bum. If I'm sitting up, if I can, I'm going to cross my right leg over the left and then I'm just going to pull it across with the arm. If I find that I can't lift the leg, it's too heavy, I can't move it, I'm just going to push both legs off to the side See if I can encourage a gentle stretch down the side of the hips and moving both legs out of the way and then turning at the same time. So see if I can create a nice release down the side of the hip to the side of the leg. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, to one and release and back and dropping that leg down relaxing the hip or releasing the leg I'm going to try the same thing stretching that left side so I'm going to lift that left leg cross it over the right with the right arm I'm going to pull across to see if I can find enough tension to stretch the side of the hip stretch the side of the bum 10 nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release and back, relaxing the leg, releasing the hip, and then I'm going to get into the back of the leg. So using the strap around the right foot, I'm just going to tag the band around the foot and then straightening out the leg, I'm going to gently start bringing the leg towards me, making sure that I feel that the leg is dropping into the hip socket so it's not catching, twisting, it's not creating pain in the groin. And then I'm just going to gently pull the leg as far as I can feel the stretch. If I'm seated up, I can do the same. I'm just going to slip the band under the foot to straighten out the leg and then see if I can pull the leg up into the stretch. If I don't have a band or I can't do that, I'm going to try and straighten up the right leg as much as possible and then leaning forward into that leg to see if I can stretch to, into the hamstring. But this time, instead of trying to bring the leg towards me, I'm trying to move towards the leg. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and ease and back. Releasing the right leg, I'm going to stretch on the left. So lifting that left, tacking the band around the left foot, to straightening up the left leg, pulling it towards you. If I can to do that, then I'm going to try and straighten up the left leg in front of me and then leaning forward until I can feel the stretch coming to the back, holding it steady there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and releasing back, relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. It's a little bit more release through the hips. I'm going to try and see if I can stretch a little bit more, but this time across the front of the chest and into the shoulders. If you're lying down, see if you can, so take the hands to the back of the head. If I'm sitting up, I'm going to try and do the same. If I find that I can't do that, I'm very, far forward so I can't reach my hands that far. I'm just going to do the reverse. Take the arms out wide and then pushing the chest up and towards the ceiling. I'm going to try and squeeze the arms behind the back. If I'm lying down or if I'm sitting up with the hands behind the head, I'm going to try and push the elbows down and towards the ground. So see if I can try and create a nice opening across the front of the chest. And then holding it steady, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one, release in that stretch. I'm going to extend to the right arm straight ahead of me. And then I'm going to hook that left arm around the, either the forearm or the back of the arm, but not on the elbow joint. So I don't want, I don't want to lock the elbow joint. And then I'm going to try and hug that right arm as close to the chest as I can feel the stretch this time going around the back of the right shoulder. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release in that arm. Same thing to the other side. So I'm going to bring that left arm to the front. Hook that right hand around the arm, wherever it's easier. And then I'm going to try and hug it as close to the chest as I can feel the stretch coming around at the back of the shoulder on that left side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And release and back and giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll if you're lying down extending the legs away reaching forward into the arms tilting the chin to the chest and lifting the head lifting the shoulders all the way up to, to the top or just rolling over onto your side and in your own time pushing yourself up Finding a comfortable seated position using the hands at the back. If I know that I can't sit up very straight, my hips are a little bit restricted, my hamstrings are a bit tight to still. And then once you feel that you've got a good position, then I'm going to try and work opening and closing. So I'm going to take a deep breath in. I'm going to extend my way up and towards the ceiling, pushing the chest forward, drawing the shoulders back. Looking forward, looking up, looking, looking behind, opening up the front of the body. And then letting the chin drop back down towards the chest, let the rib cage round, let the lower back round. I'm going to come forward and drop down as far as I feel comfortable within my body, within the back. I'm coming back up, extending, opening, lifting, looking up, looking back and release and coming forward letting the chin the shoulders drop round in the back as much as you can last time lifting extending opening up the shoulders back the chest is forward looking forward looking up look behind and releasing letting the chin drop forward one hand on the belly one hand on the back take your bow Give yourself a clap. Well done. Any question? Anything? Please.